Okay, we'll start with an opening prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for this time to examine these words, and may they help us lead more fulfilling lives and help those that we love ourselves and those that are in our hearts and minds all harm free. In the name of Jesus, amen. We're continuing with Seth Speaks, and we have really moved along. We've made it all the way up into chapter 3. And I'm going to review the statements that we have uh, covered so far. And as I list those, hopefully that will bring back just a little bit of the ideas that are um, sort of part of a statement supposed to help us remember. The uh, first one is other realities exist. All right. So once we get that premise down, then we go from there. The next statement that we came up with is, I am a multidimensional personality. And the next statement was, my curiosity allows me to understand my greater self. And as we go on and explore our other selves and other realities, we find out the next statement, my greater self is non-physical, okay? not even in this reality. And then the next statement we came up with is telepathy is the basis for my language. Okay. And then the next statement we came up with is my dreams change my daily life. Okay. And that's whether we remember them or not. The next one we came up with is my consciousness is a spontaneous exercise in creativity. Okay. And that is a good statement to actually explain life. If you have somebody ask you, well, what, what is life? The next one after that is, my mind creates my environment through perceptive patterns. So that requires a little bit more thinking. Then we made it into chapter 3, and we came up with, Seth is a teacher in many dimensions. So he made it clear he wasn't only teaching us, in this dimension, he would also had other people or consciousness entities that he taught in other dimensions. Now, the next statement we came up with is, our universe is the interpretation of mental events. So I'll just briefly explain that. Uh, mental events, non-physical, intersect with our physical energy of this reality, and that's what creates our universe, and then our interpretation of that is what we're perceiving. Gets a little bit there. And we made it all the way then to, this is the one that sort of puts a lot of it together. You gotta open your mind. And the last statement we came up with is, I am my environment. Okay, so that, directly connects us with everything we see. We'll start here, which is basically in Chapter 3, Session 520, and we're ready to begin now. And here we go. Your scientists are finally learning what philosophers have known for centuries, that mind can influence matter. They still have to discover the fact that mind creates and forms matter. Now, your closest environment, physically speaking, is your body. It is not like some mannequin shape in which you are imprisoned that exists apart from you like a casing. Your body is not beautiful or ugly, healthy or deformed, swift or slow, simply because this is the kind of body that was thrust upon you indiscriminately at birth. Instead, you form your physical form. And so it says, instead, your physical form, your corporate personal environment, is the physical materialization of your own thoughts, emotions, and interpretations. Quite literally, the inner self forms the body magically transforming thoughts and emotions into physical counterparts. You grow the body. Its condition perfectly mirrors your subjective state at any given time. 
using atoms and molecules. You build your body, forming basic elements into a form that you call your own. You are intuitively aware that you form your image and that you are independent of it. You do not realize that you create your larger environment and the physical world as you know it by propelling your thoughts and emotions into matter, a breakthrough into three-dimensional life. The inner self, therefore, individually and in mass, sends its psychic energy out, forming tentacles that coalesce into form. Each emotion and thought has its own electromagnetic reality, completely unique. It is highly equipped to combine with certain others according to the various ranges of intensity that you may include. In a manner of speaking, three-dimensional objects are formed in somewhat the same way that the images you see on your tele television screen are formed, but with a large difference. And if you are not tuned into that particular frequency, you will not perceive the physical objects at all. Each of you act as transformers, unconsciously, automatically transforming highly sophisticated electromagnetic units into physical objects. You are in the middle of a matter-concentrated system, surrounded, so to speak, by weaker areas in which in what you would call pseudo-matter persists. Each thought and emotion spontaneously exists as a simple or complex electromagnetic unit, unperceived incidentally as yet by your scientists. The intensity determines both the strength and the permanency of the physical image into which the thought or emotion will be materialized. In my own material, I am explaining this in depth. Here, I merely want you to understand that the world that you know is the reflection of an inner reality. You are made basically of the same ingredients as a chair, a stone, a head of lettuce, a bird. In a gigantic cooperative endeavor, all consciousness joins together to make the forms that you perceive. Now, because this is known to us, we can change our environments and our own physical forms as we wish and without confusion, for we perceive the reality that lies beneath. He's talking about him and his cohorts that he exists with, and Seth. We also realize that permanency of form is an illusion, since all consciousness must be in a state of change. We can be, in your terms, in several places at once, because we realize the true mobility of consciousness. Now, whatever you think emotionally of another person, let me start that over. Now, whenever you think emotionally of another person, you send out a counterpart of yourself beneath the intensity of matter, but a definite form. This form projecting outward from your own consciousness completely escapes your egotistical attention. When I think emotionally of someone else, I do the same thing except that a portion of my consciousness is within the image and can communicate. And then takes a break. And we can stop there. See how he compared what our reality is and then compared it to his own, where he's aware of some of the stuff that we're not aware of. And then so he does his more uh, with more concentration and thinking about what he's doing. So out of those uh, couple sentences, it's important for us to understand that we are forming our body, our environment with our thoughts and our emotions. Um, he says we act as transformers. One of the coincidences that we came into was if you aren't tuned in to a particular frequency, you will not perceive the physical objects at all. That was something that we're talking about those candles last night. Uh, the intensity determines both the strength and permanency of it. Um, we're made of the same ingredients of everything that we see. So, 
He says that we do intuitively know that we form our in image, but what we don't quite get yet is that we're forming the environment. We think it stops right at the end of our body. And he says, no, this just keeps on going, and everything you see, we're forming. So, to me, the image that stands out here that is helpful is that he says the inner self. Now, that's not us. That's not our egotistical self. Our inner self is individually sending out psychic energy and forming tentacles that coalesce into form. And I think that sort of is something, uh, an image that we might be able to grab hold of to try to understand that our inner self sends out in energy that coalesces into form. And I think I want to use that state. So my inner self um, sends energy to coalesce into form. Uh, We'll pick something else. My inner self sends energy to form my environment. My inner self sends energy to form my environment. I think that'll work. And that way, if you can adopt this, even try it on as a playful idea, as you walk around, just think, oh, my inner self is sending out this energy that forms this environment. My inner self sends energy out to form my environment. All right. Let's see. My inner self sends energy out to form my environment. All right. We'll use that. Now I'll have a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord, for the time and Abilities here to put all this together. The exposed ideas that are somewhat stretch our thinking. Give us a chance to decide. Do we want to try those on, believe them, play with them? Do they fit in with our lives? Are they helpful? And as we go forward, may we understand these better. May they lead to more fulfilling lives for ourselves and those in our hearts and minds. All harm free. Amen.